What's up, YouTube? Eugene here. Hope you're all well. I'm going to be showing off my Frederick Mall perfume collection here. One of my favorite perfume brands, niche brands, brands in general. And ever since I smelt Musk Ravageur about seven years ago, I just completely fell down the rabbit hole. And just recently with, with these latest acquisitions, I, I, I finished the collection. I'm missing a few limited edition pieces from this Synthesia collection, which is really great because I think they're really bang on with these um, mixing scents with colors, which Frederick Mull does oh so great. Uh, I get a lot of colors and textures from these perfumes, almost in high definition, like watching a perfume movie in high definition. It's the best way I can describe it, but um, I've got I've got everything in the in the main line, in the signature line, and I've got um, the Desert Gems. There's there's four of them in the Desert Gems. You can see here the Moon, the Dawn. I think that's Promise, and there is the Night. So really, um, Middle Eastern rose ouds, somewhat challenging. There might be one or two that are a little bit skanky. Um, but Musk Ravageur was my first love, and the moment I smelt it, it's just like my uh, my eyes literally bugged out to the side of my head, and it was like literally love at first sight. And um, Noir Peace was the same thing. When I smelt Noir Peace for the first time, eyes literally bugged out, and I called my sales assistant. And I said, you need to ship me a bottle pronto. But you can definitely say, you know, I've been quite emotional with the last couple of releases. I have to take the blame for this. I want a fucking redo. I want a redo, Freddy. Um, just because they didn't really meet the attachment I had on the expectation of them. I was expecting something that I was already familiar with. And I didn't get what I wanted and I couldn't contain my emotions. Redo! Into here. As you could, you've probably seen in, in, in the reviews of these perfumes, but after getting to know them, I can say they're definitely not trendy. They weren't made to create or, you know, to create anything mainstream or mass appealing or to move a lot of units. There's a lot of art behind these, and I, I've, I've realized that. And hopefully, learning from my mistakes, I, I won't be judging. I won't be so quick to judge, but two really wonderful perfumes. This is a, uh, I would call this a Fougere music for a while. Lavender patchouli. It, it's not really a barbershop Fougere. It's missing that soapy qualities. So I'd love to see a, a really true to life barbershop Fougere from, from Additions to Parfum. And Rose and Queer, it's not that leathery, uh, smoky birch tar that I was expecting. It's it's just completely different, like this effervescent green uh, rose geranium. So really artistic, really like what, what they've done. Another thing I'd really like to see, even though there is a, a sheep right here. Where did it go? Oh, there's the Parfum de Traces. It's classified as a sheep, and I see that. I'd also like to see like a really dry leathery sheep i don't know i just love sheep but I, the more sheep for me the better i'd love to see a dry leathery sheep um from this line but to be honest i find portrait to be somewhat of a sheep it, it gets quite mossy on me and I, I definitely get that 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 contrast of um patchouli and labdanum and I'm not sure if there's oak moss, but there's something that gives me or I get an effect of that. But contrast is another great thing. It's another word that I'd use to describe this brand. I get a lot of contrast in, you know, along with the colors and textures I've yet to witness in any other brand. Um, you know, you'll find it in a few pieces here and there from other brands, but, but nothing on this uh, size of a scale. So not only are, are these perfumes, are they conceptual, but 
they're also very functional. So meaning there's a lot of artwork that goes behind them, uh, a lot of emotions, uh, you know, there's enough to keep your mind active all day and distracted from, from things that you, other things you don't want to think about. And uh, functionally wise, I mean, they're, they're wearable. There aren't, they aren't outrageous and strange and weird. There's a few of them from the desert gems that uh, might make me a little bit standoffish and, and really, and really aware of, of my surroundings. But I think for the most part, they are very, very wearable. Um, Musk Ravageur, this is one of my favorites. I hear a lot of people saying it's, it's, it's skanky and pissy and animalic and dirty and unwearable, but I don't, I don't get any of that. I, I wish it, I wish it did that to me, but for me, it's, it's a spicy oriental with warm vanilla and, and musks and, and it's just more sensual than anything else. Almost like the, the scent or the, the smell or the taste of a lover's skin unwashed skin and um just really warm and and cozy you know i don't find it dirty or or pissy at all but that just might be the untrained nose i'm not sure i, I don't think anyone with with a lot of experience in perfumes would 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 would, would agree with that with that that dirty quality um as far as dirty you know what I do find a little bit more challenging and, and a little bit dirtier is, uh, where did she go? And that would be Fleur de Cassie, which is also, you know, likewise, this, I get, you know, the scent of a lover, but a lot more erotic and I won't go into detail, but. Uh, it's a true floral, a classic traditional floral, um, cassis, mimosa, rose, probably some carnation, very dry fragrance, and it challenges me. This one challenges me, um, maybe even more than the night, possibly more than the night. The night I can appreciate and I like a lot, but um, I want to point this fragrance out, the moon. Here's a fragrance. This is one of the later releases. It came out around, I think it's the same time as Rose and Fleur, or that's at least when I got it. But with the moon and, you know, in the limited amount of time that I've had it, I've never had so many people comment or get so much attention on a single fragrance. And most of it's positive. So this is a Rose Oud it's got spicy notes of cumin. Um, it's got a leathery cord, a, a black, almost a birch tar leather, which is strange because this could have been named Rose and Queer easily because it's got both rose and leather in it. And it's got that, that smoky, birch tarry, black, tarry leather, you know. And, uh, you know, it's got patchouli and... I think one of the things that stand out is that fruity, smoky raspberry note, like a hookah, like smoking hot, is it shisha, like they do in the Middle East. And it, it's it got an amazing trail. Like it's one of the loudest perfumes I've ever come across. And the attention that I get from it is, is, is it's outrageous. I get people asking me what I'm wearing, what it's called, where can they get it? And it's funny to watch their reactions when they Google it and, and see the price and, and their faces just kind of drop, <laughs> which is all the same to me because, you know, I'm kind of glad that I won't have to work with anyone else wearing this because I, I want it all to myself. It's, it's really that good. Um, I'm really, really enjoying this. As an enthusiast, this is a just a gorgeous perfume, but... I'm really curious. I'm, I'm really interested in what they've got going on next. What's coming down the shoot? I, I saw Frederick Mall doing an Instagram last. It was last week. He's starting to do Instagrams now during this Corona pandemic, and he was 
I think he was talking about testing some stuff from Dominique Ropion, uh, a brilliant perfumer. So I'm kind of curious, you know, what we can expect. I love Ropion's work. I love, um, here we've got Vetiver Extraordinaire. One of my favorite Vetivers, a very clean, crisp, uh, masculine Vetiver, earthy, um, dry, smoky, spicy. I get clove. Love clove. I get some cardamom and uh, very rooty. It's got a lot of rooty aspects. It's got that almost a sour orange in the opening, but it's quite rooty and cedary is from what I remember and some incense. So I love the way a Ropion balances his fragrance. It's got a, a beautiful balance, beautiful contrast, very vivid colors. It's, you know, like, like no other perfumer, he's definitely got his his aesthetic the same way Jean Claude Elena does, lightweight and transparent. Dominique Ropion loves to saturate the main note, so here he's saturated vetiver, and uh, just a brilliant technical perfumer. But I just really wanted to show my my collection off really quick. I'll probably be diving into this house, you know. Again, at some point, I, I've touched on them quite a bit on my uh, some older videos, but I'll be coming back here and there because they definitely deserve uh, more attention, more recognition. And um, yeah, so anyway, uh, if you have any questions or any comments, um, drop them down below. I, I love reading your, your questions and if I can help with anything, I'd be happy to. Uh, other than that, thank you for watching and we'll see you all again soon.